welcome to the River Arts Clay Studio. Um, if you haven't ever been before, we have a very small but awesome space here where people do hand building, they do wheel throwing. Um, wheel throwing is when you use the wheel to spin and the type of pottery that you end up with when you're using the wheel looks fairly different from the stuff that we can build by hand. But before there were wheels in the world, people were hand building, either using coils, which is like when you make baby snakes and you coil it up on top of each other, or something called the slab method, which we're gonna try to do today. We're gonna make basically a flat pancake of clay and use that to build a little mug. And we're gonna put a handle on it. So I'm just gonna show you my mug really quick. We've got a bottom. We've got the walls of our piece. Obviously we have the handle and we have the lip. And I want you to notice that our lip is not super, super, super thin because when we go to drink on this, we don't wanna cut our, our tongue or our lip on the lip of the cup. If it's super sharp, it can actually be really dangerous. You know, they make ceramic knives. So they make clay knives that you can buy at the grocery store to cut your food with. So once this is fired, it's gonna be super strong. It's going to get glazed. So clay goes into a kiln and it goes up to 1,800 degrees. You can imagine your oven at home only goes up to 500 degrees. So this is more than twice as hot as your oven at home. Once it goes into the kiln once, it gets hard and it's kind of porous like a terracotta planter pot, it will absorb water. So we dip it in a bucket of something called glaze, which has a lot of silica, which turns into glass when it's melted. And once it comes out of the glaze firing, which goes up to like 2200 degrees, so 2200 degrees, like way hotter than the first firing, then it's gonna be dishwasher or microwave safe. It's gonna have a ceramic ring to it. So when you flick it, it's gonna sound like clay. Um, this is a mug that I've made, and so we're going to make nice coffee cups for you guys to use. Um, one thing I'll just say as we're working, clay dries out. It is a mixture of minerals and deposits of mined materials, so clay is coming from the ground. It's often found near riverbanks. They dig it out. They mix it with a couple of other things to stabilize it. And then they add water so that it's not just a powder. It's not just totally dried out. And as we're working with our clay today, we're gonna to be really mindful of how it's drying out. As it gets drier, it gets stiffer, it gets harder to work with, and it can actually break and crumble rather than be nice and smooth. So everybody's got a two pound ball of clay, which we're gonna to unwrap together in just a moment. We also have a template. This is gonna help us measure and make sure that we have the right size. We have two guide sticks. And so what our guide sticks are gonna do is this is the thickness of the clay that we're gonna roll out. If we were just rolling out with our rolling pin, we'd end up with something that's a little bit floppy, a little bit uneven. We have our rolling pin, mine is um, just a dowel. Everybody's got a fork and a knife. And then you guys have a tool that I made for you all, which is half a needle tool. So if you can see this close up, it's a nice pointy bit. And then on the other half, you've got a little loop tool, which we can do some carving with in a bit. And then we have a wooden knife. Um, everybody should have a little bit of water and a paintbrush. My suggestion is that the paintbrush and the water is something you like pretend is not even there. We're not even gonna work with it until the very, very, very end. And when we're, you know how we were saying that clay will dry out, if we add too much water, it just turns into a floppy puddle. So we need to make sure that we're balancing that. We're trying to let it dry out slowly, but we don't wanna add too much water so that it gets all gross. So. When we work with our clay today, anytime you have any scraps, I want you to wrap it back up into our plastic bag. So I'm gonna take out my ball of clay, and mine is actually a little bit softer than yours probably. So we've got a nice two pound ball of clay, and what we're gonna to wanna to do is put it down on the table, and I have a canvas surface here, so it's not gonna to stick to my table as much. If you're working on a plastic table, 
we might want to just put down some newspaper so that we don't have like you know a, a sealed thing that we have to scrape off with a scraper so if you've got some newspaper you're going to want to put your newspaper down and then we're going to use our two guide sticks to determine how thick our piece of clay is going to be if i'm rolling between the two guide sticks what should happen is that my rolling pin will hit those two guide sticks and prevent me from pushing down anymore. So I'm just gonna like nice and easily roll out a long flat pancake. And what I would suggest is if you're if you're trying to do it, I, I sometimes will smack it with the pancake, you know, to try to make it nice and flat to begin with. My clay is really soft, so I don't have to do that. But if you're finding that your clay is hard, it's hard to push down, you can actually whack it with the pin, rolling pin a little bit. So now I've got my nice, smooth, and even slab. Um, whenever we're working with our clay from this point forward, I've seen people go and they like try to pick it up just by the end here. And what will happen if we pick it up from that end is it's going to end up squeezing and distorting. So when I pick up my slab, I try to use the full broad palm. So if I'm going to go and pick this slab up, I would slide my hand all the way under and have a hand on top. And now I can manipulate it and hold it without stretching or pinching the clay or, or distorting it in any way. We've got our, it, having it on a piece of newspaper is nice because you can kind of pick it up, it's stuck to the newspaper, it makes it easy. Now we're going to use our template. If anybody can guess, this is gonna be the wall of our piece. And once we've curled this around, it's gonna end up as a cup shape. Um, Sometimes potters will make templates like this so that when they're hand building, they have a teapot, they know just how big they need to cut out the spout, just how big they wanna make their handle. Um, and they'll actually make paper cups and like, you know, figure out all of the different slab pieces that they need before they even touch clay. Um, everybody should have their handy dandy, really sophisticated clay tool of a, a knife here, a butter knife. We're gonna lay our template down on top of our clay and we're just gonna cut straight down with our knife. And once we've made a cut, we don't have to worry too much about this piece. I want you to crumple it back up into a ball and put it right back into your plastic because we don't want it to dry at all because we are gonna use that. I'm gonna do the same thing for the rest of our template. Do, 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 do. Sometimes your knife will like get stuck. I continue to, I just drag it right through the clay and all of my scraps, I'm balling up and I'm gonna wrap up in my plastic bag. So you can see it's, I've tightly compacted it back together. I'm not gonna let any of those little pieces of clay go to waste because we're gonna need them for the bottom of our cup and our handle. If we let our clay dry out now, we will have nothing to work with. All right, so you might be really excited at this point to be like, oh yeah, I've got this. I'm gonna make the mug, it's gonna be great. Before we move on, this is our opportunity to consider what is the side of our mug gonna look like. Um, if we go ahead and we build our mug and then we try to start adding details, especially when the clay is so wet like it is today, it's gonna end up flexing and bulging and our cup won't be a nice straight walled piece. This has actually been sitting out for a day. You can see that the color of the clay is a little bit lighter. It's almost like whitish on the handle versus this, which is like a, well, maybe you can't tell the difference in color. This is like a chocolatey color still. Um, when it, like I said, when it dries out, it becomes tougher and more stable. So you could, I mean, in theory, we're not doing this today, you could let it dry out to about this stage and then do your detail, but we're gonna do some impressions while it's wet still. Um, your teacher should have a whole bucket of 
textured materials. I have a, a lace doily today, which I think I'm gonna use. I've also got this clay stamp. You guys might have some clay stamps I think I've included. Um, and this is just a piece of clay that I carved a design on and then fired so that it's it's got that ceramic ring to it. So what I could do with my clay stamp now is I could make a pattern. I'm gonna impress, I'm not gonna squeeze too hard, but I'm just gonna press my, my texture tool over and over on the side of my cup, making a repeating design. And I don't think I'm gonna do the whole piece. I just am gonna do the top half. Like I said, as you pick it up, you're using the broad part of your hand. So you can see that I made this repeating pattern. This half of the design, the tall half of the arc, this is gonna end up being our lip. So I've made the design repeating on the top half of the cup. Um, maybe for the bottom half of the cup, I wanna do something with the lace doily. So I'm just gonna lay it over my piece of clay and I'm gonna use my rolling pin. I'm not, I, you could do the whole part of your slab. I'm just gonna roll on the bottom half since I did that nice impressed top. I'm letting that lace sort of squish into the clay. If we push really, really, really hard, we're gonna end up flattening out our cup and it won't be the, sh the size and shape of our template. So we're just gonna gently press and when we peel up the lace or you know whatever material you rolled into it now you can see we've got this really cool texture that has come out so we're almost ready to go on to the next stage one thing that i will say is our lip you know we don't want it to cut us and we don't want it to be too rough this is like the most important, in my opinion, it's the most important part of our cup. If it feels good to drink out of, we're gonna use it. If it feels like not so great, we're not gonna drink out of it. Um, so if we have a squared edge, you can see that is that squared edge to where our lip is right now, that's not gonna feel all that great to, um, to use. So what I'm probably gonna do is I'm just gonna use the tip of my finger and you can see I'm, I'm just using a really small amount of my finger. Just use the tip of my finger to smooth out that edge. And you can see if you get clay on your hands, I'm a big fan of wiping your hands clean again. Not washing it, we're not gonna use any water, but just get that little gobbled bits of clay off your finger before you keep going. Because if you have those little crumbs on your finger, then they get stuck to your clay over and over again, which is a real bother. So, as you can see, where I've smoothed it, it has this nice rounded look to it. Whereas I didn't smooth it, it's still sharp. We're gonna wanna smooth out that lip just a little bit. And you probably won't be picking up. I'm, I'm just trying to get closer to the camera for you. I would not be picking this up over again. I would try to work as flat as possible because that will keep your slab from distorting. And take your time with this. You know, the smoothing of our lip is the most important part. So we wanna make sure that it's, and we're gonna probably end up doing this like two or three times, just like always returning to the lip to make sure it's gonna be nice to drink out of. So once that looks good, we're gonna set this aside for a minute and we're gonna get our clay that we wrapped up and we're gonna roll out a second slab. If you're like me, you'll lose your clay inside your... We're gonna make sure that it's nice and packed together. And then we're gonna lay out our guide sticks again. I don't think I have another piece of newspaper, unfortunately. We're gonna lay out our guide sticks again, and we're gonna roll out a second slab. So this is, I'll show you guys how I do it. If I can't, if it's really hard to roll, sometimes I'll do this where I hit the ball of clay over again. Still wanna make sure that it's in between the guide sticks, but once it's a little bit flatter, now I can go in and roll out that slab. 
This is gonna be the bottom of our mug. All right. So we're gonna take the our our the piece of our wall. I'm gonna just take the newspaper off the back. And we're gonna very gently, broad-handed, stand it up on the table and start to curl it around. And you can see I'm not just folding the clay. If I fold the clay in half, it's gonna crease and it's gonna end up ripping there. We'll have a crack and we won't be able to hold any water. So I'm just curling that clay around kind of easily until that wall meets. Now that seam, we need to make sure we can really seal up that seam. Because if we don't seal up the seam, we'll end up having water leak out. And this is where our fork comes in. Our clay is really wet today that we don't have to think about scoring and slipping, which is a, a technique. But we do want to rough up the edges so that when they touch each other, um, they're going to want to like grip like Velcro. So I'm just taking my fork, the back of my fork, and I'm going to gently scrape out a little bit of a texture. You can see it kind of looks like Velcro now. Oh, something's on the floor now. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and I'll come close so that you guys can see what this will look like. So I've just roughed up both sides of my wall where they're gonna meet. And I'm gonna just gently, I'm not pinching, I'm just gently hold, like pushing it together so that, and you can see I'm using like the broad part of my hand to do this. If we're using the tips of our fingers, we'll end up with like little finger pokes. We're just gonna gently join this together. What I like to do at this point is I like to look on the inside. This outside, you know, we have this texture. So maybe with just like the tip of our finger, or if you have a wooden sculpting tool, you're want to gonna put a wanna, you're gonna want to put a wanna kind of. So you want to put your hand inside the cup. Anytime we put any pressure on the outside of the wall of our cup, we want to su support and brace from the inside. So we're gonna take your hand and get your elbow up in the air and put your hand into the cup. And every time you push on the outside from this point forward, you gotta have your hand right there on the other side, supporting and bracing. So if I'm gonna use my wooden knife or the tip of my finger to smooth this together, I'm gonna to have my hand right behind to support and brace so that I don't distort the wall of my cup. And I'm just smoothing back and forth. I'm not, I'm not really applying a lot of pressure. You know, you can imagine that you're like petting a baby chicken or you know, some sort of soft creature. You don't wanna be digging into the clay when you do this. And unfortunately, if you had some, some um, design there, it's gonna get smoothed away. But that's okay, we can fix that in a bit. So I'm taking my time, making sure it's really nice and smoothed. If I come up to the, you, can, you can't even tell where that, where that seam was. You can tell where the seam was on the inside though. So we're gonna wanna do the same thing on the inside. You can either use, your wooden knife. I actually like to use the back end of my knife. It depends on if you have a square one or a round one. Um, sometimes I'll, same thing as if you were gonna work on one side of the clay, we've gotta have our hand on the other side bracing. So if I'm gonna be working on the inside of the pot right now, I wanna have my hand on the outside bracing. And I'm gonna wanna do the same smoothing. Maybe I'll use the wooden knife for this one. It's just gently dragging from one side to the other. So I'm gonna start on one side and I'm gonna smooth to the other side. And I know I'm doing this in the air, which is, oh, maybe if I do this, it'll be easier. Oh yeah, so I've got it supported by my hand that's holding it. And now I can go in and just gently smear that clay across. Sometimes if you're feeling there's like not enough clay, it's really thin, you can always roll out a very small coil and add that. But I don't think we're gonna need to do that today. Your clay is probably thick enough unless you've rolled out a really thin pancake. All right, so you can see that's, 
that's getting nice and blended together. It's okay if there's a little bit of texture there because we'll go in at the end with our finger and just smooth all of that out. We're gonna wanna make sure we do the same thing to the bottom so you can still see there's a seam here. So I'm gonna do a little bit of joining, just gently petting it. I always feel like working with clay is a little bit of like a Zen meditation. We're not trying to do too much. We're just taking it easy, enjoying the flexibility of the clay. All right. You can see our, our lip we're gonna need to do some work on again because you see how it's got a little couple of places that are no longer smooth. So we'll do that in just a minute. We've got our cup, it's nicely joined. We haven't actually been holding it up in the air the whole time, we've been mostly working on it on the table. We're gonna set it on our slab now, and this is where you can either use the pen tool, or if you like the butter knife better, you can use the butter knife. And we're gonna use that to just sort of spear down through the slab and trace it out. So if you're doing like cookie cutter kind of stuff. I wanna get close to my mug, but I don't actually wanna disturb my mug. And then I can take this off. And remember, we're still gonna use this. We wanna ball it up and put it back in the plastic. So now we have our mug and it's sitting on the bottom, but it's not actually joined. If we were to put this in the cone right now, this bottom would go and like just crack off the, the bottom. We're gonna head back to our handy dandy fork. We're gonna just gently peel off that bottom and we're gonna rough up the bottom of our cup. So if we're picking up our cup with our hand, really think about the broad palm so that we're holding it and supporting it on all sides. We're not squeezing it. If we were squeezing it, we'd end up with, you know, a pancake or a taco. So I'm roughing up the bottom. And then I'm gonna grab this piece here and I'm gonna do the same thing to the edge, just giving it a little bit of texture so that it kind of grips like Velcro. If our clay was really dry, which it's not today, it's pretty wet and we're flexible, we could add a little bit of something called slip, which is like a clay slurry. It's a little wet um, to be like a glue, but we're not gonna to need to do that today. We just need to have that Velcro texture. So now we're gonna set this back down on top and we're gonna go ahead with our wooden knife or the back of our knife and we're gonna smooth that bottom into the wall of the cup. Now, my suggestion for you is you think about going from the table up the wall. You wanna make sure your hand is inside the cup again. So we're going from the table and we're just scooping up a little bit. And if you end up removing some clay, that's all right. Just ball it up and get it back in your plastic when you can. So we're just gonna scoop up and blend that. If I go all the way up my cup, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna erase my design. So we're just doing just at the bottom. So we're just gonna do a little scooping and I'll come closer to the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I've got this seam right here. So I'm starting from the bottom and I'm sort of scooping up and it's okay if we remove a little bit of clay. We're just trying to smooth that out so that we can't see that seam anymore. If you feel like you really can still see the seam, I'll do is I'll take my fork and I'll actually rough up the outside of the surface first and then I'll go in with my wooden knife or my, the tip of my finger and smooth it out again. And as you can see, if I'm holding in the air, I've got a bot my pinky on the bottom so that there's still support. And take your time. You really want it to be well joined. The kiln goes up to such a hot degree that like, Things can explode, things can warp and shape, shake and crack. So we wanna make sure that we're really doing a good job with our joins because that is the weakest part of the clay. So you may be saying, oh, well the inside of my cup looks kind of crummy. You no, know, I can see at the very bottom, there's still some 
you know, little evidence of where I had roughed up the surface. This, my friends, is where the paintbrush comes in. If you have your, if you have your paintbrush in the water, my suggestion is you dunk it in, you get it nice and wet, and then take your fingers and you wring it out until it's almost dry. And then you get your hands nice and dry again. That's all the water we need. So if you wrung out your paintbrush so there's almost no water, that's about as much water as we need. Once our paintbrush is kind of soft from the water, we can go into the bottom and just paint the bottom of the cup. And you'll see it'll smooth everything out. If your paintbrush gets covered in clay, you go ahead and you wash it off and you wring it out again. Get your hands nice and dry. And you go for it again. So I'll show you. Now when you look in the bottom, well, it's kind of hard to see. You can't see those garbled edges as much anymore. I don't know if garbled is a real word, but it's one that I use all the time. Garbled edges. You know, you can see I'm just going in a circular motion, painting the bottom of that cup. So that seam is really nice and sealed up and it's nice and smooth again on the inside. La 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 la. Take your time. Don't let it get gross inside. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, it's kind of dark in there, so you can't quite see it on camera, but it looks nice and smooth to me. What have we forgotten? What looks really bad right now? The lip of our cup. So, if you've got wet and gross hands or there's lots of clay, you know, I, I would encourage you to wipe your hands off. And we're gonna go in with the tip of our finger and just pet the corners off smoothing that corner off of the cup, rounding it out a little bit. And I don't wanna use a lot of force because if I push on my clay at this point, it's gonna distort. So all of our movements and all of our um, attention is very gentle. So, I am smoothing, smoothing, smoothing. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, perhaps you'd say, oh, well, now what is, what, what can I do about this edge that looks kind of poor at the bottom? We could take our cup and flip it right upside down. Make sure that if you set it down, your area is nice and free of any crumbs. So that when we set it down, it's just on a nice piece of table or newsprint. We're gonna do the same thing to the bottom. We're gonna just round, smooth, if you have crumbs that are coming off in your finger, just get those off of there. Like a little ball. I'm just petting that edge to make it nice and smooth. So we've got our cup upside down right now. Might be a good idea to put our names on our cups, even though we haven't put the handle on yet. I'll actually we'll wait to the end. Okay. We've got our cup all set. I'm gonna set this right by side up. Just give it a little, if it seems like it's getting out of wonk, you can just always give it a little bit of a hug and just gently squeeze it back into a set round piece. And now we need the last bit of our clay. We are not rolling out a slab. We are gonna make a coil now where our handle is like, a, you know, if you look at the inside of your hand, if you were to, Hold your hand like so. Is the inside of your hand round? Is that a perfect circle? Or if you're comfortably holding something, is it a little bit more like an oval? Yeah, it's kind of almost like an almond shape. Um, that is gonna be the most comfortable handle. If you have a perfectly round thing, like the dowel, and you pick that up, you like have to make a fist. It's not as delicate. So if you have a handle, we wanna think about either a rectangle or an oval is gonna feel a little bit more comfortable in our hand. So how do we do that? Make sure you've got your spot nice and clear of all the junk that you have. I have a tendency to like make a huge mess whenever I'm working. We're gonna just, you know, make sure that our clay is nice and compact first. And 
nice round ball. And we're gonna just gently start rolling it with the palm of our hand. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel like it turns into a, like a, a square. And so if you're having a hard time rolling it out evenly, you can always pause in the points that are starting to feel like they're not round anymore. And we're just gonna roll out a coil. We want it to be pretty thick. We do not wanna have a skinny, skinny baby hand ball because when it goes in the kiln, it'll actually shrink slightly because all the water is evaporating. So when I, I would say, if you've got your guide stick, well, I don't actually know what your rolling pins look like, like. So we, you know, if you could imagine the diameter, you know, the if you were to have, like have a quarter in your finger, that's about as big as we want it. We don't want to make a super, super tiny, tiny um, baby coil. We want to have something that's like beefy, beefier than a stick of beef jerky, obviously. So something that's almost more like a hot dog. Um, you know, it's got some support. We don't want to have this tiny thing that ends up breaking off. So you can see how long I'm taking to roll out this coil. I'm not pushing too hard. I'm spending some time to really make sure that it stays round. If it starts to get kind of weird, I'm pausing and making sure that that gets out evenly. And as I'm going, I'm sort of spreading my fingers out. I start with them close and I work them out to the edges. This is about the width that we're going for. You know, that's, that's a nice, it's like thicker than my thumb. Your films are probably smaller than mine are, so you can imagine them. About the, the size of a really large man's thumb. Once we've got our coil, we're gonna just gently press it down so that it's no longer a circle. It's getting that sort of rectangle shape. You can see I'm not hitting too hard. I'm just giving it a little tap, a little high five the palm of my hand. And now when I look at it, it's flat on two sides and rounded on the edge. And that is gonna make a really nice handle. Some people will say, well, how big should I make my handle? If we make a really huge handle, it's gonna be kind of awkward. I like to think about this cup as needing a handle that's only as tall as the cup is. So maybe what I'll do is I'll cut it flat on one end and I'll stand it up next to my cup to measure. And then I will cut it off at that point of where the lip is. Now you say, well, that looks like a really beefy handle. I don't know if that's gonna feel good in my hand. We are gonna do a little bit of pinching now. Not pinching, but just forming it. If we go ahead and like, try to round it really quick, we're gonna end up with cracks in our handle. We can't just take the clay and bend it in half because that tears the clay. But if we gently coerce the clay into something that's round, I'm not pinching just so much as coercing the clay around. You can see we don't have those cracks. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna have my piece of clay on the ground I'm going to take my thumb on one side and I'm just going to gently start to bend that handle. You can see I'm doing multiple passes. I'm pinching it. I'm stopped. I'm getting to the end and I'm pinching and I'm pinching. And we're going for a rainbow. We want this thing to sit on the table like a little rainbow. Once we get that, we're very close to being done because we're just going to take this and we're gonna stick it on the side of our mug. And we're gonna end up with a nice handle. You know, I'm looking at my handle, I'm thinking it's a little beefy still. So if that has happened to you, you could always take your butter knife and just cut a little bit of clay off. And maybe now I'll do my finger petting and make that nice and round again. Sometimes you have to edit after you've done something and that's okay. If you have any lines in your handle right now, you can just take the tip of your finger and smooth it out a little bit. I like 
to spend some time really you know your handle your lip and your handle are going to be the thing that you interact the most with you're going to touch your handle every time you pick up the cup and you're going to touch the lip every time you drink so what i'm doing right now is i'm just gently pressing on that corner to round it out a little bit more as you can see i want to get back to a coil shape so i'm just gonna gently press on that corner to make it rounder again and i'm gonna smooth it out okay going back to gently giving it a little coercion for a rainbow and it sits on the table like so sometimes what i'll do is i'll just gently go back back and what that will do is it'll make sure that our where we're going to be connecting to our cup is nice and flat and ready for connection it also you can see it almost like squished it out just slightly so that there's almost a little bit of more um, area to connect if you have a really small end of your handle, like if it's that much, there's not much to connect there. So if you, you know, get that a little bit fatter, it'll be easier to connect it because there's more clay touching clay. We've got our handle, we've got our cup, and now is the magic moment to connect. If you have a spot where you feel like you really like the design, maybe go on the opposite side so that every time you pick it up, that op that design that we really like is still there. We are gonna wanna get our fork. And you can see my fork is like covered in, in garbles. So whenever you have a tool that's covered in garbles of clay, we're gonna clean our tool off. Word of wisdom. And here's our opportunity to make that rough Velcro. I'm gonna go across, I'm gonna go up. You can see the way that I'm holding my handle. I'm cupping the whole handle. I'm not holding it like this. I'm holding it in the palm of my hand like it was a, a fruit or a baby bird. And I'm gonna do the other side. Scrape, 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 scrape. Scrape, 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 scrape. We want it to really be nice and rough so that it wants to join. We're going to just imagine, where do I want to put this on my cup? I kind of like it right here. If I hold it up to my cup, and if I can find my pen tool, here it is, I can take my pen tool and just gently trace out where it's going to sit. I like to pick up my cup at this point. I'm taking my hand, if you can make a fist, you know, the hand is too big to do that, so I'll just Gently put my hand in and I'll lay it inside the hand like that. And, um, oh, here's my marks. I'm gonna go in with my fork and just gently fork that into a Velcro. Yes, to fork, a verb. To rough up the surface of clay, to fork. <laughs> and, We've got our handle ready to go. We're gonna just, you see how I've got my hand on the inside still. We're gonna just gently press against the inside of our hand. And you can see that I'm not pressing like from the top. I've got my hand wrapped around that handle bit and we're just pressing it into the wall. And us do the same thing on the bottom. And I'm just gently getting it on there. Now, if we were leaving it like so, what do you think was gonna happen? It's gonna get up to temperature in the kiln, it's gonna go and it's just gonna pop right off. Well, you've gotta make sure that this is really well attached. So I'm gonna take my wooden knife, I can figure out where it is, and I'm gonna do a little bit of that smoothing action. So anywhere I see a seam, I'm gonna go from my handle and smooth and scoop that clay a little bit down into the mug body. If you feel like your wood knife doesn't work, you can also use the tip of your finger. So you can see I'm just scooping that clay, smoothing it out with the tip of my finger as I go. Scoop, 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 scoop. Do the same thing on the inside. Smoothing it down. 
You can see I'm sort of like rounding my finger as I go. It's a good, good technique. Do the same thing on the underside of the top half. Maybe I'll grab my wooden knife and get reach in there a little easier. <laughs> Take your time, you don't want it to yeet off in the kiln. Yes, I have a tendency to sing when I am um, working and make up lots of weird songs. It's one of my favorite tasks to do while I'm doing something. Now, if we look at our mug right now, our handle is like kind of drooping a little bit versus this handle that I did earlier. You see how it's like, it's given a little lift. It looks kind of like an ear. How we're gonna do that, if you have any leftover clay, we can sort of use that. But we're just gonna give it a little bit of a, a facelift, pushing it up a little bit. And if, you're, if you feel like it's drooping a lot, you can stick some clay underneath to just brace it. And once you've done that, you might just wanna go and make sure that your connection points look good again. So doing some more smoothing. And what I'm gonna do is like right here where I'm gonna actually hold the clay, I'm gonna spend some time really smoothing that out. So I've got my finger on the inside and I'm pushing down on the top because I wanna brace. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of like a round, like as if you're cleaning out the insides of your ears. You know, just smoothing that down into a nice ear shape. Wherever my finger is gonna touch, I want it to be nice and smooth and feel really good in my hands. Now, you may be tempted, well, I wanna pick up my cup right now. If I go ahead and pick this up, the handle's just gonna rip right off. This one's been sitting for a while, so I can at least get my hand in there. But if I still, if I'm gonna let the whole weight of the cup sit on my hand, this could just crack off. Our handles are only gonna get strong once it's been through the first firing. So we wanna be really careful with making sure that we don't end up with, um, you know, we don't end up picking it up from the lip, don't end up picking it up from the handle. We wanna be very gentle, as if this is like a brand new baby bird. We gotta give it proper support. So once we've got our handle on there, we've really spent the time to smooth La, 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 la. Take your time. Don't make it bad. Where's my wooden knife? I need to use that. As you can see, I just cleaned my wooden knife off. I don't want those garbled bits getting back on my beautiful mug. And just scoop that inside, make it nice and smooth. Make it look nice. Now, 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 we can think about our texture again. So if you were like, oh man, I like totally messed up my print. You can go back and find your, find your tool and just, you know, give it a little bit of a, a touch up. If we're touching the clay on the outside though, we've got our hand on the inside. And maybe you'll look at your, the lip of your cup and you're like, oh man, it looks so bad now. So we're gonna just spend some time smoothing. You can see I'm sort of like running my finger around rather than like up and down. I'm gonna just smooth it make it look good the longer you spend finishing it now the happier you'll, you'll be this is like the best it's gonna look you know if it looks kind of that so great right now when it comes out of the kiln it's still not gonna look that great it's not like the kiln is this magical cure-all for all of the problems you know if you've got if you can see any seams opening up you want to spend that time now making it look really good. And you can see when I attached my handle too, just wanna point this out. My handle doesn't go way up high. If yours goes way up high, if you try to turn it upside down right now, you're gonna end up smushing your handle down. So if, you, if your handle goes way up high above your lip, when you have to sign your name, you're just gonna wanna ask your teacher for some help in flipping it over and maybe setting it on the edge of the table. So if, if my hand was the table, so that the handle hangs off the table just a little bit. And once we've set that upside down, now we're gonna go in and 
sign the bottom of our piece. That is my loop tool. All right, here we go. I have seen people go, oh my gosh, this is like a pencil. I just want to scribble my name. The, 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 the thing about the pen tool that isn't great about signing your name, you can, I'll give you a little demo here, is it's going to cut into the clay. And we end up with this like flap of clay there. It doesn't look very good. Um, if you wanted to do a really cool, you could use your loop tool. And as you carve away the clay, you end up with this little ribbon. You want to clean your tool, but you've got a nice, smooth, large piece. So I'm going to make my name. I wonder if I even told you my name. My name is Lisa. You know, it's a very strange thing to talk to a computer screen. As I'm sure you know, it's like talking to yourself in a echo chamber. So, carved my name. Um, now I'm gonna do that on the bottom of my cup. You, the other thing that I know that I have given your teachers is some um, like kebab or a dull pencil will also work. If it's a sharp pencil, it'll do the same thing that the needle tool does. So a dull pencil I think is the best. You could also write your name with this. So I'm gonna write my name. And if you find that there are some like little garbled edges, you can either tap them down at the tip of your finger. You don't want to smooth it because if you smear it, it'll smear your name. I like to sometimes go multiple times over my name. You know, we don't want to press down hard because it'll ruin the bottom of our cup. And then the next thing we're going to do, this is what all of the great artists do. They date their work. So in 400 years, when someone finds your pot and, you know, uh, excavated archaeological dig, they'll know from what year it was made. So we're going to put 2021. So if you've made your name really big and you want to redo it, you can always smooth it out, wipe it away, erase it. 2021. You can see I'm going to go over it a couple of times. So that's really nice. And maybe your teachers will say, oh, also put your, your class or something um, so that it's easier to pass it out. But if you've got your name and your name is legible, it's got to be legible. So if you look like it's hieroglyphics, that's not going to work. You need it to be legible so that your teachers can get these back to you and they're out of the kiln. So we've got our names and the year. We are completed with our awesome mugs. Um, this is gonna go in the kiln, as I said before. I'm just gonna like give that lip one last look, give the handle one last look. This is gonna go in the kiln. That takes, you know, between, it, we wanna dry it all, all the way, so even drier than this piece is. Once we've dried it out all the way, then we will um, put it in the kiln. It takes about four days. Once it's cool again, we'll dip it in the glaze. We'll stick it back in the kiln for another like four days. And then we will get these back to the school and you guys can take them home. So maybe you have a, you have a friend's birthday party coming up. You're like, oh, I could give my pottery to them. I always end up giving away my pottery, but maybe this will be your like cherished cup. You will use this for every meal from this point forward. I hope you guys had fun. And um, if you have any questions about what we did today, you can always write, you know, like, oh, if I wanted to make a teapot, how would I do that? If you have any questions, just think about if you wanted to come to River Art sometime and work in our clay studio. We sometimes have after school classes that run. We have clay camps in the summer, which are mostly full, but we have a wait list for a second clay camp. If you're really excited about learning how to use the wheel, you could sign up when we might even create another camp. So have a great rest of your outdoor academy, you guys. Bye.